IDR. This is René for Network Lessons. In this video we'll take a closer look at IP routing. So IP routing, that's the actual forwarding of IP packets throughout a network. So in this picture we have two host devices, uh, host 1 and host 2, and there are two routers, R1 and R2. Now I will explain everything step by step, how an IP packet from host 1 makes it to host 2. Um, okay, so let's start with host 1. So host 1 is going to send an IP packet from its own address over here, and this will be its destination. So that's the IP packet. Now host1, what it will do, um, it will have to check and see if the destination is in its own subnet or outside its own subnet. And it does so by looking at its own IP address and its own subnet mask. Now when we look at host1 and I'm using a uh, router as a host device which is okay. Um, let me show you its IP address. So it's using this IP address. And we can see the subnet mask over here. So by looking at its own IP address and its subnet mask, it figures out that 192.168.2.2, which is host 2, is outside of its own subnet. And what that means is that we have to send it to the default gateway. Now I disabled IP routing on this uh, device, uh, which means it doesn't build a routing table. That's how you turn a router into a host device. Uh, but you can see that I did configure a default gateway. So 1.254, that is my default gateway. And that is the IP address of R1 over here. So host1, what it will do is it will create this IP packet with the source and destination. And then it will build an Ethernet frame with its own MAC address as the source. And R1 will be its destination. Now if host1 doesn't know uh, the MAC address of R1, then it has to do an ARP request. But in my case, we can look at the ARP table. You can see it already did the ARP request, and it figured out the MAC address of R1. Okay, so that's how this IP packet with the frame makes it to R1. Now, R1 has a couple of more things to do with this frame. First of all, it receives this Ethernet frame, and the first thing it does is it will check if the FCS, the frame check sequence of the frame, is correct. If it's not correct, then the frame is probably corrupt and the frame will be discarded. Now, there is no error recovery in uh, Ethernet. So this frame will be discarded and that's it. Uh, and we rely on upper uh, network layers like TCP on the transport layer for things like error recovery. So that's the first thing, we check the frame check sequence. If the FCS is correct, then we look at the second thing, and that is the destination um, MAC address. Uh, so this destination MAC address. And what we do is, um, this router will process the frame if uh, it sees its own MAC address as the destination, that's one option. It will also look at it if the destination is a broadcast or if it's a multicast address and for a multicast group that the router is listening to. So in this case, the destination is the MAC address of the router. And that means that we will uh, process this frame. So that's what it does. The next step is that R1 will take this Ethernet frame and it will de-encapsulate the IP packet from the frame. And then this frame will be discarded. So it will be thrown away. Now we got this IP packet. And then the first thing we do is we look at the IP header checksum. And this checksum, um, it's kind of like the FCS on the Ethernet frame. We can check if the IP packet is corrupt or not. So we check the header checksum. And if it's correct, 
then we will process the IP packet. What we do then is we will look for um, the destination of the IP packet. And the destination is this address over here, 2.2, and R1 will look in its routing table. So we will go to R1, and we will look if we have a route that matches this um, destination. So we do have a route. Uh, this entry matches 192.168.2.2, and we can find a next hop address. So we see that we can go to 12.2 in order to reach this network. So 12.2, that is, let's clean this up a bit. 12.2 is this address of R2. There we go. So that is our next hop to reach host 2. And so that is the first thing we figure out. But now we have to figure out how to reach 12.2. And we can see we have an entry here, because this network is directly connected. So we need to reach 12.2, and we can use this interface over here. Okay, so what R1 does next is it will take the IP packet, and it will decrease the time to live field by one. And the time to live field is there to make sure that if you have a routing loop that the packet doesn't route around forever. So whenever a router routes a packet, it will decrease the time to live field by one. So it decreases its TTL, and because it does so, this changes the header checksum. So R1 will have to recalculate the header checksum, um, and then it's done processing the IP packet. What it does next is it will take the IP packet, it will put it in an Ethernet frame with its own address as the source. Then it has to enter R2, R2 MAC address as the destination, and it will have to check the ARP table for that. And here we have an entry that says 12.2. We use this MAC address that's uh, for R2, and we can reach it on this interface. If there's no entry here, it does an ARP request, and then we wait for the ARP reply. Um, okay, so that's how this packet makes it from um, R1 to R2. Um, so when R2 receives the IP, the IP packet and the Ethernet frame, it starts by checking the FCS of the Ethernet frame. If the FCS is correct, then it will look if um, the Ethernet frame has a correct destination, which checks out because it's this address, which is the destination. It then uh, de-encapsulates the IP packet from the frame, throws the frame away, we don't need it anymore. And then it first checks the IP header checksum, which is correct. If not, it will drop the IP packet. And IP, by the way, also doesn't have any error recovery. We also rely on the transport layer for that. And what R2 does then is then it will look at the destination field of the IP packet. And it will have this packet, which should be um, delivered to 192.168.2.2. And it will look at its routing table. So we'll go to R2. And we will look for an entry here. And we have one. And this entry is directly connected for this network. And we use this interface to reach it. So what R2 does next is um, it will look at this IP packet. It will decrease the TTL, the time to live field, by 1. Then it recalculates the header checksum. And then it will create a new Ethernet frame. And this Ethernet frame will have this address as the source, this address as the destination. And then it has to figure out if it knows 
this MAC address. Uh, so if it doesn't uh, know the MAC address, it will do an ARP request. But in our case, we do have an ARP entry. Uh, so 2.2 is over here. This is the MAC address. So if we didn't have an entry here, then R2 would do an ARP request for this IP address. Um, so then this frame can be forwarded from R2 mm -hmm. to H2. Host2 receives this uh, Ethernet frame. It will check the FCS. It will then see its own MAC address as the destination. It will de-encapsulate the IP packet. It will see its own uh, address as the uh, destination. And then it will send the data uh, up to the transport layer where it will be processed further. Um, and that's basically it. So this is how an IP packet is routed from one router to the other. Um, I hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching and till next time.